Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 35 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm hoping to finally finish up our linked lists, and I'm sure you're ready to finish them too. Uh, it's just a long block of tutorials. Um, so the good news is I think we're going to finish it. Uh, the bad news is is that this is probably the most complicated part of linked lists. It's how the lists actually get linked. So um, yeah, it's obviously... Uh, it's going to be one of those hard things, and you may have to come back and look at these tutorials or rewatch it a few times. But I promise you'll get it, uh, it. Once you get it conceptually, you'll understand. So, with all complicated things comes an awesome little graphic. And I apparently love these things because I've used them every time I think I can't explain it otherwise. So, um, basically, what we have here is uh, my interpretation of a linked list and I mean it's how they work but it's my drawing I guess so um, how this what I'm trying to figure out here is what we actually need to put in the code to get the list to work so we have our head pointer here and our tail pointer here so we just have to see what important things we need to put in our code so to start out our head pointer has to get um, the first allocated thing uh, or the first thing that we create in our list. So head pointer is going to get current pointer on the first run through. So we have to have something so that is changed once, but we never have to change it again. So we have to have some kind of condition so that uh, doesn't change every time we go through the loop. So that's one thing. Our head pointer has to get the first thing. Another thing is that the tail pointer is always matching up with the current pointer. The tail pointer always gets matched to the last thing in the list, and the current pointer is always that last thing. So the tail pointer is always have to, going to have to get the current pointer at some point. So that's another uh, thing to look at. And another thing is, or the most important thing probably, is the all the pointers inside of the structs. If you recall back to the code, our struct person has a pointer to another struct person. So what that means is that um, this pointer has to point to the next struct in the list. So um, when we go through this, uh, the next pointer at some point is going to have to get our uh, next the next person in the list. And another thing that's uh, that we have to note here is that the the last next pointer has to get the value of null because it has no more blocks of uh, memory. So the tail pointers next is going to have to get a null value. So that's another thing to look at. So let's get writing the code. And uh, if you forget half of what I just said, it's all right because I'll we're going to go through it again. So uh, let's start up a condition here, and this is going to be to uh, get our head pointer to point to the first thing in the list. So if head is equal to null, as we assigned it up here, and this is why we assigned it before, if head is equal to null, head will head will get the current pointer's address. So not the address of current pointer, but what current pointer is pointing to, head will get uh, what it's pointing to. So basically the current pointer uh, head has the same value as current pointer. They're both pointing to the same thing. So what that means is head is pointing to the first thing in memory because this is only going to be uh, done once. After we go through the loop again, head isn't equal to null anymore, so that's not ever going to be executed again. So that's uh, why we use an if statement for that. The next thing was that tail pointer is always what the current pointer is. It's always the last thing in our list. So somewhere along here, we have to say tail gets current pointer so that it points to the same thing. So our tail pointer gets our current pointer. And then another thing that we said was that the tail, uh, tail's next pointer, or the last thing, its next pointer has to point to uh, or has to be equal to null because there's nothing to point to. Like here, when tail is pointing to our last thing in the struct, tail's next pointer has to be pointing to null or a null value. It doesn't, it's not pointing to anything. So we have to assign it a null value. So tail and its uh, next pointer will get the value of null. 
So that's uh, just about everything, but we are missing one thing, and I'll explain why we are missing and how we're missing it um, in this. So let's imagine that we've just created our first little block of memory here. Forget the two other things right now. So we're on the first run through the loop. We've created it. Head pointer gets the current pointer. So head is pointing to this. Tail also gets the current pointer. So tail, this tail pointer, is pointing to this first block because, again, it's the only thing we actually have. So it's pointing to the last thing. So this is the last thing because it's the only thing. So tail gets the current pointer. And then tails next will get a null value because if we only, again, have one block, it's not going to have anything else to point to. So t the next pointer gets a null value. Now, when we create another object, we have to have it point to that object. But it doesn't do it on the first round through. So we have to have uh, some kind of condition that um, it's going to point to uh, this object here. So the way we do this is we create an else. And um, the reason we're doing this is because after the first run through, the second time, um, this isn't going to be executed the second time through because head isn't equal to null. So the second time through, um, the second time we run through the loop, this if statement is false, so then it's going to go to this else statement. And the next that is here, tails next pointer is going to get the value of current pointer. So how this looks in the list is the second time we've run through it, current pointer is pointing to this struct right here. Tail pointer is still pointing here because we haven't changed it yet. So tails next is pointing to this um, this person right or this struct right here. So that's why we've done this right there. So that's uh, that's the complete rundown on the linked lists and how everything gets linked together. So that's all you actually have to do for that. But of course we want to print them out, so let's do something for that. So let's do for loop, and we're going to use a for loop with pointers this time. So our current pointer, again, we start out with the head because that's where that's where the first element is. Head stores the first the address to the first element. So current pointer gets head. And we said that the list would be done when it reaches um, the, the null value, because um, the next way over here is going to have a null value. So it, uh, when it is equal to null, it's not going to execute anything. So when current pointer is, um, as long as current pointer is not equal to null. And then current pointer is always going to get current pointer's next value. So how this works is if current pointer starts with head, and when it runs through this code once, it's going to current pointer is going to get current pointers next. So current pointer and gets this next pointer. So then this current pointer is going to get this struct, and it's going to point to this struct. So I know this is all really confusing, but I I promise you, if you work through it once or twice, you'll understand how it all works by the end. So let's just do a printf here. Percent %d for um, our uh, what the, the num inside of our struct. So current pointer and num, and then do another printf, and percent %s backslash n, percent %s current pointer of name. And that's all we're doing. So that's all we have to do. So now let's actually run through this uh, before we're done with this entire thing. So it says enter your name, and it screwed up the formatting here, but enter your name, Lucas, and Bob, and Marley, yeah, Bob Marley. Um, who else can we say? Um, Santa. So there we go. When we're done with this, it prints out one, Lucas, two, Bob, three, Marley, and four, Santa. So that's how uh, this entire thing worked. And we can do a few things with formatting in there to make it look a little better. But that's pretty much how linked lists work. And there's different ways that you can approach it. This is a very simplistic way to express how it works. But you could have made an option to you know, add a new uh, item to the list and make it a lot more complicated. But this is just a simplified way. So anyway, this was the final lesson on linked lists, and I hope you enjoyed them, and more tutorials for different things are on the way. 
see you next tutorial.